reading to you from Luke, the 18th chapter, and the 22nd verse. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lacketh one thing, sell all that you have, and distribute unto the poor, and you shall have treasures in heaven, and come, follow me. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then, one year later, God called me to preach, and I've been sharing Christ ever since. Friends, I want you to be sure and uh, pray for the 7th, which is next week, and the 5th. The 5th will be in prison, two services, and then we'll have my operation uh, Tuesday. Oh, friends, I tell you, I thank you for your prayer support. I thank you for praying for your pastor, praying for one another. My stars, that's the greatest equipment we as Christians have is the power of prayer. Well, listen, folks, I'll be with you for a half an hour tonight. Won't you kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, pour your glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee? Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Friends, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to uh, the uh, 11th chapter of, I mean, 17th chapter of Luke and the 11th verse. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men which were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Friends, we've labeled this one thankful man. Well, the word thanksgiving has been mentioned about 140 times in the Bible. You remember David? David had a, made a mess of his life, a man after God's own heart. But in the 103rd chapter, he cried out to God, thanking him for what he had done. No, the Lord didn't restore, didn't, didn't give him back his salvation because he didn't lose it, but he restored the joy. And then we read in Daniel 6.10, <clears throat> Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his whole and his windows were being opened in the chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. And we read in First Thessalonians 5:18, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus." concerning you. Well, Paul, of all the men in the world that was thankful for what the Lord did for him, it was Saul of Tarsus. Why? Because in ignorance, he was out destroying churches. He was seeing children, uh, seeing Christians killed. Didn't bother him a bit. In fact, the matter is when Stephen was stoned to death, they said that Saul was holding Stephen's coat. 
And I don't think he ever got that out of his mind until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Well, there's some lessons on Thanksgiving for a leper. Jesus met ten lepers. One of them will soon be a thankful man, but the other nine never showed up. Oh, that's a shame. Well, <clears throat> we read in verse uh, 12 and 13, And he, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood up. In fact, the matter is when Stephen was stoned to death, they said that Saul was holding Stephen's coat. And I don't think he ever got that out of his mind until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Well, there's some lessons on Thanksgiving for a leper. Jesus met ten lepers. One of them will soon be a thankful man, but the other nine never showed up. Oh, that's a shame. Well, <clears throat> we read in verse uh, 12 and 13, And he, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Beloved, can you remember when you cried out, Jesus, be merciful to me? Can you remember that? Well, now he saw these lepers when he in, in, entered into the village, and they stood afar off, as was commanded in Leviticus 13. It says, It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, beloved, let me tell you, many, 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 many years ago when we lived in Lyndon, Washington, my wife and I and four children were in a terrible auto accident. No other car involved. We just went end over end down into a ditch of water. And uh, my wife broke a collarbone and, and I had a nail driven into the bone of my leg well, they thought I was the least hurt, but I end up I was the worst hurt. And so this night <clears throat> was, a, oh, was a beautiful evening, and they took me into the hospital. And I was in this l room alone. We didn't have any money. We were really struggling to keep our family fed. And now here I am. We don't know how long I'd be in. We don't know what they're going to have to do to me. So I laid there and tears streamed down my cheeks. And all of a sudden, this song came to, came to me. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, beloved, I sang it over and over. And I got peace. Because, friends, great is the faithfulness of God. We can depend on him. You say, Cecil, don't you know that uh, we are having a terrible time? Don't you know that Thousands of people are losing their homes. They're losing their jobs. We have no future. But, yes, I'll admit that. I know all about it. But I'll tell you right now, God is on his throne. If we as Christians will do what God said, come back to him, he'll heal our land. Oh, yes, he will. God does not lie. See, <clears throat> lep leprosy pictures the sinful state of all of us. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, and our Lord is rich in mercy. Now, they were called on the right man. They've called on that right man. These lepers have many things in common uh, with us. They were afflicted with the same disease, and the Bible tells us Romans 323, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you and that's me. And these lepers, they had a disease just like we did. We had a sin disease. See, without Christ, there is no hope whatsoever for any of us. No hope. Well, the lepers cleansed by Jesus, verse 14. And when they saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that 
as they went, they were cleansed. Friends, that's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. That's the greatest thing that'll ever happen to you. When we're cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus, that's the reason he went to Calvary. He went there to die on the cross for you and me. God only had one son. Now, he was sinless. We know that. But he was tempted such as you and I were. But the Bible said he absolutely took your sins and my sins upon him and became sin. And God had to turn his back on his son because God cannot look on sin. Whenever you sin, you know, he, he looks through the blood of Jesus. Well, friends, <clears throat> when our Lord saw him, he had compassion, which he always has. And Jesus responded to their call. Why go yourself to the priest? Because that's what they were supposed to do. He, his command demanded faith. Friends, he said, ye must be born again. That's exactly what he means. He doesn't mean there's two or three doors into heaven because there isn't. The Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man, but no man cometh unto the Father except by me. The priest had authority to pronounce them clean. Now, friends, I want you to know something. Christ's work stands the scrutiny of man. Just read the Bible. As they went, they were cleansed. My, that must have been a beautiful thought. Here they were losing their fingers and their toes. Ah, uh, but listen. Their first step of faith brought cleansing. Now, faith in Christ brings immediately cleansing from our sin. You remember when old Zacchaeus, that little short tax collector, was sitting up in a sycamore tree so he could get a good look at Jesus? And Jesus looked up and said, Come on down out of that tree, Zacchaeus. Now, he was saved somewhere from the time he left that limb until he hit the ground. Friends, salvation is instantaneous. It's not a long, drawn-out process like you've had heard some preachers say. And it isn't by baptism. And it isn't by being good. It's by trusting Christ as Lord and Savior. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well... Let me ask you, will you take this step tonight? Let's read verse 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a sound, loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And you know there was bad blood between the Samaritans and the Jews. You know that. Well, <clears throat> He glorified God with a loud voice. He made it known to all those people sitting around there something had happened in his life. Friends, are you telling people what happened in your life? Are you testifying of the death, burial, resurrection? Are you telling people they can know that they've been born again, that they're going to heaven when they die? Have you done that? If you haven't, you are not fulfilling the obligation that you and I have to Almighty God. No, I didn't say you could pay for your salvation. But if you're saved, you're going to want to share it. People criticize me quite a bit because I'm always testifying. But beloved, that's what uh, Apostle Paul did. Wherever he went, whether it was a king or whoever, or a man on the street, Paul said, one day... On that road to Damascus, there appeared a great light out of heaven. Oh, boy. And when God saved that fella, he hit the ground running. Oh, I hope I can do that until my life is over. Hit the ground running, sharing my testimony, and reading the Bible, sending Bibles and out and, and movies and, and songs any way I can to help win a soul to Christ. And you know what, friends? I'm so glad that, 
that God told me to make that film against all hope. I'm so glad, because if he hadn't have, well, we wouldn't have a film like that. It's not the greatest film in the world. In fact, it's, you know, it's just, it's an ordinary film. But it tells the truth of what an alcoholic and his family goes through. And if that they, if you get that out of it, then I'm thankful. Well, why the leper gave thanks? Well, he had been hopeless. Now he has hope. When I go down into the rescue mission and talk to those men and women, winos, some of them are mental, some of them are just homeless and sick. We give them hope. We tell them that we were there. We had that experience. We were in jail. We know what it's like. He had been homeless, but now he can go home because he's healed and is no longer going to give anybody else that terrible disease. Now, he'd been rejected. Now, my friends, he is being received. Oh, friends, we ought to be as thankful as this cleansed leper. But are we? You know, the Bible speaks about in first in, in uh, Revelation about leaving your first love. Are you as fired up for the Lord now as you was the day that Jesus came into your heart and changed you? Are you? Well, if not, you know what I suggest? You get down on your knees and say, Father, I have I've wandered off and my heart has been cold. Lord, put in me a hot heart toward Jesus. Make me a soul winner for Jesus. Oh, my daily prayer, and you know how you've heard me say it a million times. Lord, fill me with your blessed Holy Spirit and do me with power from on high. Give me holy boldness. That's what we need. And then, Lord, give me souls for my hire. Oh, my friends, that's what God wants you to pray every day. Well, the lepers were thoughtless. Verse 17, 18. And Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this one stranger. Only one man out of ten was really happy that God saved him and God delivered him from that horrible, horrible disease. Well, how soon we forget the goodness of God. Friends, you know what? When you get down the dumps, and I do, because, you know, uh, diabetics, diabetics really have problems with mood swings. We can't help it. It's when our blood doesn't do right. But I'll tell you one thing. Whenever things like that, for you get down on your knees. I can't even get on my knees anymore because of my crippled knees. But I'll tell you one thing. I bow my head and I thank him. And I go over the things that he has done for me. I don't run around the country telling people what I'm doing for Jesus. I'm telling the people what Jesus is doing for me. That's what we need to do. See, Jesus commends a thankful man, verse 19. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Well, are we thankful or are we thoughtless? Our gracious Lord deserves thanksgiving and praise. I've got something written here up here uh, on my uh, studio. Now, here's what it says. A person can believe in God, yet feel he is above others. He can act prideful, arrogant, and super spiritual. He may hope for an eternity to be with God and with other believers, yet he can be cold and distant. But love, true love, has no weakness or dangers. Love never fails, never comes short. But remember, love is not indulgence and license. Love involves control and discipline as well as care and giving, senseless and sacrifice. Well, he did something for me 55 years ago. When everybody had given up on me, even the preachers didn't have nothing to say to me. 
Even the shrinks didn't have nothing to say to me. But this one preacher knew Jesus. Born again when he was just a little boy from Texas. Oh, yeah. And man, I'm telling you, when God saved and called that young man, he never stopped. He had sugar diabetes. He lost both of his legs. He had a bad heart. He had asthma. You would think the man couldn't get around, but boy, he saw a lost man, and he was there to be a witness to them. Oh, I'm so glad that I knew Tom Baird. Most of all, I'm glad that I got to meet him, because if I hadn't have met him, I probably wouldn't be saved today. Well, friends, let's ask you this question. You say, Cecil, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. Well, do you want to know? Well, if you do... Here's a prayer that can change your life. Absolutely change your life. And here's how the prayer goes. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm sorry for my wayward life. Tonight, the best way I know how, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' precious name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I'd like to have you call me. 303-471-8534. No, I won't use your name on the air. I will not embarrass you. I'll not sit down and write and ask you for a nickel. And I sure don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. If you can't afford that call, you call me collect and I'll accept the charge. 303-471-8534. Eight five three four. I'm waiting for your call. Well, friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. And I want to thank you so much for listening. Oh, I pray I said something that would draw you close to the Lord or that you would give him your heart and trust him as your Lord and Savior. Friends, I know a lot of our listeners are going through a lot of heartaches and discouragement, but I'm saying Take the upward look. Look to Jesus. Tell him your needs. Tell him your problems. He wants to hear from you. Every every problem you have, little or big, he's interested in you. That's why we call him our personal Savior, because that's what he is. Well, friends, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus it's coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.